Hello again, Fleet Commanders. Tiberius here with another edition of my new player tutorial series, 2022 style. Today we're talking about Ops 31 through 33 and some of the different things that are going on during those Ops levels so you can help to plan and prepare accordingly. Uh, hopefully you've been enjoying this series so far. I know I've enjoyed creating it and... Uh, Hopefully you learn from some of the, uh, the details and some of the mistakes that a lot of players make, and you can avoid them. And uh, we're going to be looking at a variety of things today. Uh, first thing we're going to start with, we're going to touch on real quick, is the research. That is one of the more straightforward items. Um, but there are some slightly new researches going on. There's always new tiers. Ah, oh, game crashed. All right, well, that reloads. We can look at it over here. So there are always some new tiers of research that usually get unlocked in your, you know, every couple of levels. So you probably have a new uh, new set of efficiencies in your low 30s. You can pick up here for building and research upgrades. These are going to cut down on the cost that you need to spend on those resources. Uh, you know, the new Starbase tree has come out. There's some efficiencies in here. This will lower the cost of your ISO emulsion. This will lower the cost of the metals, which is what you use for this entire tree. Um, and then out here a little bit, we also have these crystal gas and ore efficiencies. Hopefully my lower account is booted back up now. Hey, there we go. So we can get in and take a little closer peek at that. So we were talking about the Starbase tree. Kind of going straight up the middle here. You can get a couple of these assembly metals to make this stuff cheaper. You can get Iso Emulsion to then make your territory tree a little bit cheaper. And then you can come out here and work your way through this tree and get out to these efficiencies to again uh, make your crystal gas and ore cheaper. Uh, these researches do not require crystal gas or 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 <laughs> to make your researches cheaper. Unlike the ones in the other trees, the galaxy tree, the outlaw tree, you're spending ore to make your ore cheaper for future researches or buildings or things. These boost your research cost without using ore. So you want to get these done first and the ones in the territory tree as well. So you can see here we can get these efficient ones for, for ships, for buildings, and for research, lowering those costs so that when you do come over to the outlaw tree, for example, and you start looking at doing some of these crystal researches, um, or you get here, I think these might be 34 is when you can get to these, but either way you still want to be building toward that. Um, but the, like this, this costs gas. But if you can do the other ones first, this will cost less gas. And then it'll make your other things cheaper from there. Same thing as you move out here and you're looking at your pure researches here. Oh, somebody killed me with a cloaked ship. Well, isn't that nice? <laughs> you got the weak ship. Oh, who cares? Let's just recall these guys so I don't get so rudely interrupted again. The other things going on in the research tree, in the starship tree, you can start to develop your swarm researches a little bit more. This is going to boost the abilities of your USS Franklin, and then eventually your Franklin A when you get that a little bit later on. Uh, but anything here, like looking at some of these, this is these are big jumps in weapon damage boosts, so the, you know, the ones up here that you can do, uh, boosting your armor, lowering their mitigation, things that'll just make doing your swarm dailies that much easier as you start to progress. Uh, you'll be killing 32s for most of this, for this whole section, and even again, still at 34. Um, the number that you have to kill increases, so normally it's, you know, it's like kill some 32s and then kill some 30s and then kill 15 or higher. Um, you know, that's the one that costs like do 50 kills and then it's like 
you know, 10 at the 32s and 25 at the 30s. Um, in this range, they start to go up, and it's they're both 32s at one point. So it's like kill 25 32s and kill 35 32s. So, and as you start to move out into that into the 34, you know that's where that transition happens. Um, you don't have to kill 35s until you go up even higher. Uh, so you don't have to worry about, you know, keep making progress with your Franklin, but you don't need it necessarily maxed out by this point in time uh, to be able to kill 32s. You can also use your regular ships like your Saladin or your Centurion. Uh, they hold up pretty well against those enemies as well. There isn't a whole lot of other things in the way of, like, new researches. We talked about the Outlaw. Away teams, again, you're going to get a little bit further in this tree, get some extra uh, stat boosts here for your officers and for your ships, give them a little more shield health. Uh, these are very good to get done when you can. They do take a little while. They're about three to four days apiece, but getting some base stats to your officers helps increase your ship strength a little bit, makes the ship stronger, and then... Uh, also makes your officers a little a little stronger when you're trying to do away team missions. That's really it in terms of research. Like I said, it's just more of the same. There's nothing uh, really huge. Uh, minus this one little exception over here with the Mantis, which we'll circle back to uh, when we get to that ship a little later on. There's no real new big unlocks. It's a lot of more progression of other things, you know, extra levels of efficiencies, extra levels of existing research, uh, and things to start to take a little bit longer there. Moving on to topic number two. It's going to be our factions. Klingon, Romulan, Federation, Faction. In this range, 31 to 33, your goal ideally would be to get one of these locked at 10 million during this ops level range. That's going to get you to this respected milestone. Uh, once you hit 10 million rep, you can never go below 10 million again. That's it. You're locked. You're good. Um, your dailies will require you to kill 38s and 39s, and also you're still mining 3-star resources here. Um, once you get the next level beyond this, celebrated here, uh, at 30 million, they go up to killing 40s and 41s. And then I think when you get to 50 million is where it transitions to 5-star or 4-star resources. You know what? I think I have a I think I have a chart for that. Uh, let's go check out my charts folder. Let's see what we got. Well, I had a chart, but it doesn't seem to want to open. Yeah, we don't have a chart. I apologize for that. I had one, but it doesn't seem to want to open right now. Whatever format it's in, doesn't seem to want to work. Uh, but anywho, so you get the 30 million. You don't want to. You don't want to push this up in this ops range. You want to get it to 10 million and lock one of them out and then start working on the other two. If you've been dual grinding the whole way, like I was dual grinding Romulan and Klingon, I got Romulan up to 10 million and got it locked. My Klingon was about six and a half to seven million. So at that point in time, you know, you start cashing in whatever Klingon missions I had left to get that the rest of the way. I was not doing Klingon missions. I did my Romulan missions. I got my Romulan up to 10 million. You know, while I was dual grinding, Klingon was about six million, six and a half million. Then I went back and I started doing all those Klingon missions I had been sitting on 
because I didn't want to lower my Romulan rep. But now that it's locked at 10 million, I don't care. And my Federation was in the toilet at negative 2 million. While it's still stuck there, knock out all those other Klingon missions. Get them done and out of the way. Ooh, Armada. I know, I'm a squirrel. I apologize. Leave your other rep in the negative for now. Get that second one working on it. Get that up to 10 million as well. And then once they're both locked, then you can circle back to the third one later. Your goal, ideally, like I just said, is to get them locked. But even if you just get the one, the one you plan on building your G3 epic ship with, when you are level 32, if your rep with that faction is at least 8 million, then over here in the away team store, you will be able to see the ship blueprints for your G3 epic. I don't remember, I apologize that I do not remember if it's Ops 32 or Shipyard 32 that I had to have before this showed up, but it was in the 32 and 8 million rep. So once I got there with my Romulan, I was able to start accumulating Augur blueprints. So all those away team credits that you've been saving up for the last couple levels, now I can start getting my blueprints, start to get a nice head start on them. Plus I'm getting my faction credits and whatnot. Once you get that second faction locked, here's my recommendation. So you got the first one to 10 million, the second one is close, you know, five, six million, whatever like that. Stop doing these for a couple of days. Knock out all the missions you've got for this one. Leave your third one wherever it is in the negative. Uh, and just grind the rest of this one the rest of the way up to that 10 million lock. And then keep doing your faction missions for the two of them. Ignore this third one for now. Keep doing both of these, getting your faction, whatever you're doing doesn't matter which ones whichever two you're doing keep doing your duels um, and get the faction credits for both as much as you can you know keep spending on officers in these recruit packs you get these new 3000 bundles these are actually even more efficient this is now 50 credits per pack pull instead of up these up here which were 60 or 80, or 100. Now you can get it down to, it's a single pull, uh, but they're 50 apiece. This is one of the most efficient packs you can pull in this entire thing. And I just screwed up and clicked that button when I didn't want to. All right, well, that sucks. Uh, also down here, the other thing you want to keep working on, these Federation messages, killing scouts, great way to source faction credits to help get you closer to getting more of these blueprints that you're going to need when you get to 34. You need 180,000 faction credits, if you're just doing it strictly faction credits, to get these blueprints. Uh, they are 1,200 apiece. You need 150 of them, so it's 180,000. Anything you can do to knock those out with the away team credits will greatly help. As we see over here, Away team, auger blueprints cost thirty-six fifty a piece. So some big chunks of away team credits. You also will start to see them show up in your alliance tab here, in your chests here. They will start to show up at thirty-two, but you will still have some other ships in here. The rare pack at thirty-two will get the epics, but it will also still have the 32 ships in there. So this is still kind of diluted and watered down. Probably want to keep saving these until you get to 34, and then this gets thinned out a little bit, and then it's just the miners and the epic ships. Give you a little bit better odds of getting some, some epic ships for whichever one you're going for here. Some blueprints for that. The epic chests 
is kind of still a crapshoot because even at 34, these hijacked ships are still in there. So plus you have the Devor, plus you have this. So this pool is still getting watered down. Uh, these guys don't go away until 36, which is terrible. Absolutely terrible. But they don't go away sooner than that. Uh, but that's your goal with your faction rep. As far as officers go, you want to keep doing those officer packs. These guys. Well, let's go through here and go this way. Keep going through here for these officer packs and get in these. Whatever you're doing here, Klingon, Romulan, Federation, or whatever. Because your goal is to try to start maxing out a couple of these officers. Like as you can see here, I've got the, the, common, the uncommon officers. They're all maxed out. And I have Curla maxed out now. Now instead of getting additional Curla shards, every time I would pull one of him, I am now getting transporter patterns. It's only like 75 or so per rare officer. It's more for epic officers when you eventually get those maxed out, but they do start to add up. And then you can start having the option of choosing some officer shards that you want to get. If I wanted crash shards, if I wanted con shards, 6 of 11, who I don't have unlocked yet, a thousand transporter patterns will get me sh a shard, one shard for this officer. So the more officers in these bundles here, ignore these, see a separate video for why these are absolutely garbage, aptly titled by the way, the more of these officers here that I can get completely maxed out. Now, remember, you don't need to upgrade the officer to their max tier. You just have to collect all the shards for it. So you don't have to spend the faction credits to upgrade them to start getting the transporter patterns. You just have to collect whatever the magic number is here for their maximum officer shards. and then you'll start getting those. I don't have any of the Romulans really yet. These guys are getting close. Uh, they're already over their final tier. They're into their final tier, so now they're moving their way up there. And these guys are already all maxed out. Uh, the uncommons give officer XP. The rares and epics give transporter patterns. So that's where we are with your faction rep. That's kind of what your goal is. Like I said, get one of these to at least 8 million during this window by the time you get to 32. The other thing that we're going to talk about, the other big topic at this level, are the ships. There's new ships, and that's what everybody likes to hear. Uh, the first ships we're going to talk about come from Cosmic Cleanup, which happens to be running right now, which is kind of why it makes it a little easier to record. First one we'll talk about is the sarcophagus. This ship is a colossal waste of time. It has one use and one use only. And it takes 20 weeks of doing cosmic cleanup to get enough blueprints to unlock it. 20 weeks. That's five months of cosmic cleanup every Saturday. So you can get this ship. Ooh, bat another battleship. Oh, hey, it's epic. Hey, it's 700,000 strength. What does it do? Plus bonus to weapon damage when fighting on nodes during a territory takeover. So unless your alliance is either attacking or defending a territory, this ship has 19,000 attack. That is abysmally low. Decent defense and health, sure. Looking at the details, you can see, you know, it's a battleship, so it's got some shield piercing, crit chance, crit damage. Impulse speed is only 80 because it's a battleship, so it is a very slow-moving, sitting duck that is only good for territory fights and attacking or defending the nodes. 
not even in the territory fight is it good. Only if you're sitting on a node or attacking a node does this thing actually have any value. And then it has tremendous value. Its attack goes up 86,000%. But its attack is incredibly low. And it's, as I mentioned, low impulse speed. So you have to get to that node. And as soon as anybody sees your slow ass just crawling around in here and your sarcophagus, they're going to go hit you before you even get there. They did make cloaking for this ship, too, to try and help it. So you can cloak it and fly it into the system and then, you know, attack somebody on a node to clear it or park it on a node. Um, but how many times can you realistically do that? Four or five? You know? Depending how many, how much Tetrions you have saved up. This is a big pass for me. This is a skip it. This is uh, maybe if you want to get it later, worry about it then. The other ship that becomes available in this section for cosmic cleanup is the Amalgam. And this ship is the complete opposite of the sarcophagus. This one is one of the best ships in the game and a ship that you will use forever. This ship, you get eight blueprints per pull. So that's 12 and a half. Since you can't pull a half, it'll take you 13 weeks, which is why this is limit 13. Once you get your 13 pulls, this goes away. Usually what most people do is during an event store, they will usually they sell them in blocks of five in an event store. So what people will do is they will either just buy one. So instead of being four short, now they have one extra. Um, and that'll cut a whole week off of your wait time. Or... Um, Where's my calculator? If I do my math right, I think they usually buy 40 blueprints? No. They buy 80. They, they buy... They do four pulls from the event stores. So they get 20 blueprints from the event store, so then it's only 10 weeks here, and then you have no extras. That's how we do it. Apologize for that. Had to think about it for a second. Uh, yeah, so you'll get 80 blueprints out of here. You'll get the other 20 from an event store when they become available. You have to be Ops 31 to see them in an event store. So if you're not quite there yet, you're going to have to wait, and those come around every three to four months. But what does the Amalgam do? What makes this ship so good? Well... Its ability is this little combat scavenger. After winning a battle, if the target has more resources than what your available cargo space is, you fill its cargo and then take an additional tiny little fraction of a percent here that slowly scales up as your ops level increases of the remaining resources. So you're like, this is this is nothing. What is this? This this uh, this doesn't make sense to me. It depends on the target that you're attacking. So if I'm hitting a base near me, let's look at my cargo capacity. It's about a million. That's with Stan, just as the only cargo boosting officer. You can put Laan below decks. If you have other officers like the some of the Borg guys that boost cargo space. There's a handful of officers here. Uh, so Stan boosts cargo to Pring and DuPont boost protected cargo, so they're not helpful for that. Uh, if you come down here to your Borg officers, 2 of 11 as a captain boosts max cargo capacity. And 4 of 11 here, who's the Borg version of Stan, his... Uh, Officer ability boosts cargo capacity. So the and then of course four of eleven gives two of eleven synergy, boosting his captain's ability. Uh, if you don't have you know these officers yet, Stan certainly helps with that. And as I mentioned, Laan can go below decks to boost your cargo capacity a little bit further. The other officer you want to focus on who would be helpful for the situation would be Bator. 
because her officer ability is this varied income streams, which is when on the amalgam boosts the amalgam's bonus loot ship ability by 10%. So you get an extra 10% and then this scales up as you tier her up. So what's the bonus loot ability? Well again, it all depends on the size of the target that you're attacking. If I'm attacking this player here, who has virtually nothing in resources, my bonus ability is basically nothing. I'm just getting whatever my max cargo capacity is and calling it a day. But if I come over, arguably speaking, can I see this guy's base? All right, so here's a guy with like 60 million resources. What's in our calculator? 60 million times point oh 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 one five. It's an extra 9,000. Not a whole lot. Not a whole lot. This ability does get boosted up, and then obviously, uh, you know, Bator's ability adding 10% to this would give you 9,900. So still not all that great. But let's see if we happen to have any neighbors who have a little bit more juice. Hey! Now that's a little bit better of a target. That's 389 plus 142 plus 136. That's 677 million. 667. Now times point zero 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 one five. And again, this is a tier one amalgam. Now I'm getting an extra 100,000 resources. And then Bator would add 10% to that, giving me 110,000. That's every scoop. Instead of getting a million, I'm getting 1.1 in change. So I'm getting a little bit extra, more than I should be holding. And if we go to our dear friends over at stfc.space and we look at our ships and we go look at our amalgam, you can see that as you start to tear this up, this percentage starts to increase pretty decently. So by the time you get it up to, we'll say, tier 3, it's now 0.03%, so this is effectively doubled from 0.15 all the way up to 0.3 by that. So now you're getting, in this particular example, we'd be getting 200,000 extra per scoop. And that's going to keep growing and getting bigger and bigger. And when you fi start to find bigger targets and people who have billions of resources, now you're getting even bigger scoops. Um, you know, on my level 46 account, I've had scoops as big as 55 or 60 million uh, resources per scoop. My base cargo capacity on that is about 9 million with the officers that I mentioned. So I'm pulling an extra 45 to 50 million per scoop. It really all depends on how juicy a target you find. Uh, you start hitting some of these ops 50 players, you know. Somebody else in your alliance cracks a big base open and now becomes a feeding, a feeding frenzy. You can pick up some big chunks of resources off of a, a level 40 plus or even a 50 plus player with with an amalgam. Uh, the ship itself is a bit of a hybrid ship, meaning that right here after tier four, when you're trying to go from four to, whoops, nope, from five to six, uh, once you get to tier five, this is what you have would have spent so far. It is a lot of these amalgam parts, which come from the refinery. We'll talk about that loop in a second. Uh, but it's it's ore and crystal, but it's not a lot of resources. This is a pretty low amount, a little bit more in the commons, which you can use latinum for to get this upgraded. To get the tier five, uh, it's really just the amalgam parts. And the tritanium. Can't gloss over the tritanium. Two billion is kind of a lot of tritanium for a, a lower level player. Uh, but again, research can help you lower that. These are the, just the base costs. Uh, but it's going from five to six here that now you, now you kick into four star parts. So you're going to kind of be level capped uh, at, at five, yeah, tier five for a while. But tier five is still, still pretty solid. Uh, at tier five, let's see if I can see... 
yeah, your base cargo capacity is 900k. Then you start adding in all of your research that boosts cargo capacity, your treasury, uh, all that kind of stuff. You're gonna get up to a couple million. Then you put the officers on it, and they they boost it. You know, you're gonna get up to a couple million there, uh, just in your base scoop before you start even adding it. And then you start looking at, well, tier five is is 25 here. Now you're at almost, you're at 0.49. So that's slightly more than triple what we started at down here. So this was getting us a hundred thousand extra on a you know on a on a target with less than seven hundred million total resources. Um, you know now as you get up here and you get the tier five, now you're getting three or four hundred thousand extra per hit per hit. This adds up pretty quickly. Definitely speeds up the time capacity in terms of rating. Um, and again, we talked about that base cargo capacity, 875 there at tier 5. For comparison purposes, you have probably been using an ECS Horizon so far, trying to do some rating with this thing. Uh, the base cargo capacity at tier 9 is 280,000. So this is four times as good if you get it to tier 5. Now how do we get it to tier 5? How do we upgrade this thing? Let's go take a look at what's going on there. So in our refinery you will have this amalgam tab once you get the ship unlocked. You'll get it earlier, and it will just have uh, some of these things in here for, like, the refits. And you'll be like, well, all right, well, how am I supposed to do anything with that? So here's the amalgam refinery. This plundered cargo comes from the sub little areas uh, in Romulan and Klingon space, all of these systems, regardless of what level system it is, they all have these 31 supply ships. The Klingon systems have Klingon supply ships and Romulan attackers. These ships do not lose or gain reputation. None of these ships have any reputation changes on them. So if you have to kill things for events like, say, Faction Hunt, and you don't want to lose rep because it's going to hurt your rep grind, you can come in here and you can kill things to get, at least for Romulan and Feder and, uh, and Klingon, kills. Uh, but killing these, these mining ships gives you this plundered cargo, which does nothing until you have an amalgam. Once you get an amalgam, you go here, you'll use it to, you, you know, you'll use it to do the refinery, but what you want to do first is get this plunder exo. So we saw that that thing there gave us 10,000 uh, loot, 10,000 cargo. This plunder exo comp costs 100,000 to get, so you're going to have to grind for the first 100,000. Most people use a Vidar to do that because it's got the bigger cargo capacity. You make a couple trips back and forth, killing those things, you get 100,000 loot, so you're ready to go. As soon as you get your amalgam built, you cash it in, you get this plunder exocomp. The plunder exocomp is in the galaxy, and it will always be all the way at the bottom. It will always be the last one. 9,900% bonus to the amalgam plundering. So this means that when you're using the Amalgam and you're killing these guys and you have that Exocomp activated, it's good for an hour. So I recommend moving your base fairly close uh, to these systems. So it's only like a two or three minute travel time back and forth. It takes you two or three minutes to fly out. You kill this guy. Instead of getting 10,000, you get basically a million. It's 9,900% bonus to this. So it'll be like 990,000 and change, basically a million. It's going to fill up your cargo. You fly back, you drop it off. Now you've got a million. Now you come back. You can, you know, depending on it, you know, how close you can get. Uh, you're looking at 
five minutes travel time. Come here, kill a guy, fly back. Drop your cargo off. You can get 10 to 12 kills done during the hour the exocomp lasts. So even at tier one, you can stockpile 10 to 12 million in terms of resources. You know, you're going, you can just use Pike Moreau Chen, or if you have other officers, uh, and again, put Laan below deck to get bigger cargo capacity. So that way you can stockpile this a little bit and you'll get several million. So that way when it comes time to do your amalgam refinery, which only lasts, uh, comes around every three days. When you do it, you get two things. You get amalgam parts. Tier one, you get about 2,300 parts. Uh, as you tier this up, the number of parts you get increases. This is also true of an event store. If your event store is selling amalgam parts and you want to buy some to upgrade your ship, buy enough to finish the tier you're on, spend them, upgrade your ship, the amount, you know, this refinery will reset when you upgrade the ship and tier it up. And your event store will also change and now the amount of parts that you get, it will still cost the same amount, but you'll get more. Because now it'll be, oh, here's what the tier two payout should be. So if it was 3,000 for tier one and it's 3,500 for tier two, still costing you the same, but now you're getting 3,500 parts per redemption. So you're getting more value there than you would normally. I think this chest costs a million to cash in. Uh, and you can do a two chest pull. So you cash in two million at a time. If that sounds right. I really wish I had this open. You know, let me see if it's on my other account. Probably not. And again, I apologize for my poor planning on this one. I probably did it. Yeah, I did it. At any rate, you get a small amount of parts for the amalgam. You also get these other weird little things here. These are used in the recruit tab. As you can see here, you have the amalgam special for tiers one through five. This changes when you get your ship to tier six, which you're gonna have to be ops 40 plus really, unless you're gonna scrap Mayflowers and legionaries and whatnot to get the four star resources. Not gonna recommend that. You're gonna wanna use those on primes instead of upgrading your amalgam. Uh, but you get these little things here in random numbers. When you get a thousand of them, you can open one of these boxes. Uh, you have a chance, a very low chance of getting a good amount of Honor Guard Wharf Shards. As you can see from here, it's less than 1%. 99% chance to get one or two shards. Heavily weighted to just getting one shard. Uh, most likely that's what you're going to get. You're going to get one Honor Guard Wharf Shard. Uh, if you get two, consider that lucky. I've never seen a 10 pole. I've never personally gotten a 10 pole or a 110 pole. Uh, and I've never really heard of maybe one or two people getting a full pull on this ever. This, you know, if this is less than 1%, what's this? 0001%? Probably a better chance of getting struck by lightning than getting this 110% one. If you do ever pull this, uh, you know, go play the lotto because it's your lucky day. You also get these consumables and then these refit wild cards. Uh, again, not really weighted to getting the higher level ones. Uh, these are pretty more balanced. Uh, as you can see, these exo comps, uh, you've got the green ones here that will boost your reputation gain. These last for an hour. You have to be in your dock when you activate them. So again, you want to move your base close to where you're going to be farming. Uh, you'll activate one of the exo comps, get a reputation boost, go out, kill hostiles uh, for as long as you can. and help that rep grinding out. Uh, if you're doing something like faction hunt and you don't want to lose reputation, you might have a shot at getting some of these negative rep ones. So instead of losing 10,000 for killing a guy, now you only lose 5,000 for killing him. Uh, so it'll help protect your reputation if you have one of these going also. The other things you get are these ship skin shard trackers. Usually you get them in 24 or 36s. 
if you go back to the amalgam refinery you can use those for these ship refits 80 shards that's four pulls of this that's 7200 if you're getting 24 a pull you can do two pulls a week you're getting 48 a week and you need what 8000 uh what did i say 7200 and we'll say conservatively you're getting 48 a week 150 weeks that can't be right that's like three years yeah no that's right It takes a really long time to get anything for free out of this thing. Sometimes you get some lucky pulls, you get some 36s. Uh, you know, maybe you get enough loot to do more than one chest pull, which sometimes also happens. Um, but I've had my amalgam for two weeks now, and I'm up to 84. So, yeah. Uh, a week and a half. Yeah. So, not, not going not going super great there uh, but it is a way to source ship refits and a couple of weapon refits as well with these projectile beams uh, and then the cloaking for the amalgam is also available through here so you have some options of things to get but again these are not cheap you need what 75 shards so again 28 42 you're looking at about 5500 so again gonna take you a pretty long time did I do the math on the first one right now I'm second guessing myself yeah they are more aren't they 36 yep 72 okay so the weapons are refits are actually a little cheaper Seventy-two times seventy-five is fifty-four hundred. Divided by what do we say, ninety-six. So we eh. we'll say seventy-two a week. We'll give you the benefit of the doubt. We'll say seventy-two a week. Still seventy-five weeks. So unless you get some lucky pulls, uh, you're looking at like one a year. For something free out of here so don't don't rely too heavily on this is kind of what i'm saying i know i'm a little all over the place today i apologize but the amalgam's a great ship and that should be your focus uh the other ships that become available at 31 are the faction miners the cavort the antares and the valkis these ships, each one has a different mining boost to a specific resource, boosting the rate of gas for the Federation one. Cavort one boosts crystal. Valkus is the Romulan one. It boosts ore mining. Uh, as you cheer it up, that percentage increases, and these ships are pretty good. Uh, they are a significant improvement over the horizon. Uh, sorry, one more thing about the amalgam. Uh, the warp range on the amalgam, while it is not a great... Uh, speed miner the warp range on it starts out at warp 40 which means it can get to a good number of mining systems uh, so great for overnight mining uh, because it can get out pretty far and it's got decent cargo capacity even though it's mining a little slower you can send it out to a, a further system where maybe there aren't as, as many players and uh, and do some overnight mining with this or park it during the middle of the day and just forget it while you go to work or something like that um, you know whereas the horizon the warp range on it maxes out at 40 so if you have to get all the way to tier 9 to get to 40 warp speed or the amalgam at tier 1 we also talked about the cargo capacity being a big difference uh, I do want to talk about we'll pick the cavort all three ships require the same things to upgrade they all require gas and crystal does not matter which faction it is or anything like that uh, they are just all gas and crystal to upgrade 
And as you can see here, they're boosting the base rate of mining. And as you cheer them up, this bonus increases pretty decently. By the time you get it up here to OPS 20, you know, you level 20, you've doubled that up to 144%, and it eventually max out at 250%. So these are some pretty big improvements. Total blueprints, you need 100 of them at 150 a piece, gonna cost you 15,000. My recommendation is don't buy them. When you are ready to do, when, you're, when you get to 34 and you get your faction miner, I'm sorry, your epic uh, G3, epic ship at 34 to 35, you are then going to start progressing further into the game in terms of what you are going to be attacking. You're going to be attacking lots of 39s to 41 hostiles. They will drop a regular, on a regular rate, they will drop blueprints for these. Um, just to give you an example over my 46 account, just from, you know, again, haven't bought any of these, but from all the faction grinding and everything that I've done, I have accumulated 600 plus cavorts, 212 Valkis, 73 Ontarius. That's extra. I have one of each of these built. I think I actually have two cavorts and two Valkis built because I was going to consider them for scrapping, uh, but the scrapping payouts are not, not good on them. Um, I also needed places just to dump ship XP for an event, and I had nothing left, so I just built these just so I could dump some ship XP into them. Uh, you don't do that. <laughs> um, but yeah, you're, you're building one of each as you progress, as they become available. Uh, don't waste your faction credits on them. You don't need to. You get plenty of these, uh, especially these, because as you're grinding rep, you're going to be spending some time in the magical land of Taiga Core, and these drop pretty regularly there. Also, once you, you know, start progressing, you, uh, you don't need to get one very early. As we look, they are, let's do this side by side to make this better. If we just look at, compared to, say, the Horizon, this is what it costs to get a Horizon from Tier 1 to Tier 9. You're looking at 3,200 crystal. That same amount of resources gets you here to about Tier 5, minus a very minor amount of rares. Similar Tritanium and Dilithium costs. You know, obviously you're spending a little more in the survey parts. Again, you can use Latinum for that if you have it, but the resources are about the same here. Uh, you know, a, a Tier 5 has the same warp range as a Horizon. And the base cargo capacity is slightly higher. But this ship was free to acquire, and you've had one for a while now, and you've probably worked it, mo you know, a good portion of the way up already, if not all the way. Uh, you know, you probably have it at least tier six or tier seven. So now you're really thinking about: Am I just taking this the rest of the way? Am I investing these resources here to get this up? This one's cheaper to repair. This one's cheaper. Well, according to this, it's not cheaper to repair. The repair time is faster. A lot faster. Half the repair time. Uh, so when they do get blown up, especially if you're at war, uh, this one will save you a lot of speed ups in that aspect. Uh, and again, you've already invested a good amount of resources into getting this one upgraded. Don't spend the faction credits on these guys wait until you accumulate them uh, and then go ahead and you know and build one uh, just to give yourself a little bit of a boost uh, these used to have more of an importance people wanted to get them earlier in the game because of the extra cargo capacity compared to the horizon so it was bigger cargo 
capacity, so the officers then gave it a bigger boost. So this was your primary raider, was to have a faction ship, you know, get four or five million a scoop with it. Now you have the amalgam for that, so that should be more of your focus in that regard, and not so much with these ships here. All right, we talked about the faction miners, we talked about the amalgam and the sarcophagus. Two last ships to cover in this in this little window here. Uh, the Mantis is the first one. We're going to have to switch over to my high-level account for that one. Uh, currently, as of this recording in early October, there is no free-to-play path announced yet to unlock the Mantis. They have hinted that it will be coming soon, for a while now. Um, anticipation is end of October, early November. They will tell us what the path is going to be doesn't mean that's going to be added to the game yet and when it's going to start you know being able to acquire the blueprints if you were playing the game I want to say it was August of 2022 and you spent the twenty dollars on the uh, battle pass the elite battle pass you got half the blueprints in the bottom half of the track you had to spend 50 bucks to buy the rest of them. Or you could just spend $100 and buy the whole ship outright at the beginning of August, and then you could, you know, have had the ship sooner. The Mantis gives you an additional refinery. It's a battleship. It's a level 33 battleship. It is not a fighting ship. It is a support ship. It has its own specialty refinery, because, you know, that, that's what we do. We, we build specialty ships with specialty refineries that have loops, that make us go out and hunt and kill things to get credits that we then turn in to then get chances at redeeming for stuff that we want. So the Mantis, you get these beacons, very similar to the Vidar in this aspect. You're limited to two per day. You can only hold eight. You go to a special token space. You kill hostiles. They drop stuff. You bring it back to your base. Condensed Venom we'll circle back to in a second. Uh, that they, they drop this Axion Venom, which you get from killing hostiles. When you come in here, you then have the ability to convert that to... There's a number of ways which you can convert it, but you only have a limited amount because you can only do two kills per day, you know, two trips per day, two hulls. So whatever your cargo capacity is, uh, is all you can get. Again, having like La'an below decks, I actually use Stan as my third officer uh, on my killing crew for this with my Mantis to, again, boost my cargo capacity so I can hold more. So, again, because I'm limited by the number of trips I can make. This right here is how you get the ship parts to upgrade to the ship. This is a one-day cooldown. This here is how you get the particles to do research to boost the Mantis in the Starship tree we're going to go take a look at in a second. This is a three-day cooldown. This here is how you get Syndicate XP in some very nice chunks to help move your Syndicate XP uh, levels along and start getting some much bigger and better rewards. Uh, most people wanted the Mantis just for this because Syndicate XP is something that takes a, an incredibly long time to get. The fourth one here is this Axion Venom, which you get uh, hull fragments for. 15,000 gets you 1,150 hull fragments. The hull frag, you know, right, you're converting one currency into a second currency. Uh, the hull fragments then get converted here for officer shards for five of the Strange New Worlds crew. Uh, Pike, Hemmer, Ortegas, Uhura, and Spock. It's Pike plus the people who have bonuses against hostiles. La'an is not in here. Una is not in here currently. They may be added sometime in the future. You have a very slim chance of getting a full poll of these officers. I think I've opened probably 70 or 80 packs now, and I've gotten two full pulls of the rares. Um, and I think that's about it. Usually you get a lot of twos and fives. Those are ones that certainly are the more common drops. Uh, but you do have, I mean, as you can see, I still don't even have Hammer unlocked. Uh, but there is also another way to get these. Uh, there are separate videos on the Mantis as well that will explain this in more detail. 
but the short version is you go out, you kill hostiles, you fill up your cargo, you come back, you convert this stuff into these different things so you can upgrade the ship, so you can do different research that'll give you more weapon damage, bigger cargo hold, that kind of stuff, uh, and you get Syndicate XP. The Condensed Venom, you get a thousand of this per day. In your daily goals, you will get two missions here. They require you to spend a thousand. Uh, this one requires you to spend a thousand venom. This one requires you to spend two thousand venom. It costs five hundred venom to debuff a player. Those are those really annoying things that completely cripple the ship and make it easy to destroy. It's something that the higher level players absolutely hate because they've invested so much time and money into these big G4 and G5 ships, and now here comes along somebody with a mantis sting that kind of cripples their ship, and now somebody a lot smaller can actually kill them or cause significant damage to them, which then gives them a very steep repair bill when they're getting punched up greatly in some cases. Um, but the trick to this is, is don't do this every day. You only get a thousand per day, so you can do this every day, this action hunter one every day, and that will give you 986 hull fragments. That gives you just under 7,000 a week, or you can save it for day two. You get a thousand on the first day, don't spend it. You get a thousand on day two, spend it all do this one, which will also complete this one. And for completing this one, you get triple the rewards. You get 2,900. So instead of getting 7,000 a week doing it this way, you get 30, almost 3,900 three times a week. So we'll call that 11,000... 3,900 times 3, 11,700, rounding up. This is a lot better than 7,000. So the trick with this is, is use it every other day. Uh, like I said, it costs 500 to debuff a player. You would see if I have this available here. Let's see, hey, look, there's a guy. Uh, the game currently allows you to debuff any player that's on a mining node, including players in your own alliance. So you would go ahead and hit them with this thing here. Oh, I have it. There we go. Uh, it'll apply the, the debuff there. It would cost you 500 out of what you need to do. Sure, why not? He has now been debuffed by the Mantis. It's been corrupted. So he has a whole host of things going on. Minus 53% critical chance. Minus 53% critical damage. Minus 40% shots per round. So he's shooting less per round. And delayed weapon fire for one round, so much like Rom, he doesn't get any shots in round number one. When your Rom's attacking a base, Rom delays their shots. This also means they don't get any shots in round one, and it, it moves everything back. So whatever their round one firing pattern is, is now in round two. So basically, just skip round, you know. Oh, and they can't warp and run away. <coughs> so... Uh, I will do this, you know, four times to complete my mission. Usually I just go find some miners in my own system just to complete them. If you're actively engaging in PvP combat, you'll save it and you'll use it on people that you're going up against. I'm not ex anticipating <coughs> any PvP going on tonight, and I want to make sure I get this done. So I'm just going to debuff some people here in my own alliance just to get this thing finished up and get my dailies completed and get my hull fragments. Um, the duration of the debuff changes as you tear up the ship and as you do some of the research. And if we go look 
into that research. I said we circle back to it later. And now we are. Here in the Starship tree, uh, the first one I would want to focus on would be Mantis Cargo, getting a boost so you can boost that up, get more cargo capacity. Then you want to do Mantis Weaponry so you're doing more damage. Much like the Stella, the Franklin, the ship itself has a huge damage bonus to these particular types of hostiles, whereas other ships don't, making you encouraging you to use this ship to do the killing. So because you have the limited cargo room, you want to boost that quickly. Then you want to focus on this. You can also pick up the extra hull health, so now the ship can stay out there and fight longer. Get these up a couple of levels each. Protected cargo, probably don't need to worry about, depending on the ROE in your system, uh, in your in your server. Uh, because it is a token space, most rules of engagement prohibit people from attacking stuff within token space. Um, you know, if you're at war, that might not apply, or if you're on a server that doesn't have that rule, uh, this might have a little more value to you. I, this isn't something I have to worry about on my server, so I've ignored it. Uh, shield health, boosting that up a little bit, and impulse speed. Uh, you kind of need to do these at least once to sort of unlock higher tiers of some of these other ones. Uh, you can also get these primes, but who cares about those? We have, there's enough primes in the game as it is. You don't need primes to boost this too, uh, unless you really want to, and then knock yourself out. But as you can see here, I'm just spending a couple minutes. Now I've already finished this one. I got my 986. Uh, but the Mantis itself is not really a strong fighting ship. I mean, it's it's a battleship, so it's got decent, and it's a, you know it's a G3 rare. This is another hybrid ship, I believe. So if we go look at the Mantis. It is considered a G4 ship. Okay, so it does start off with a little bit more, uh, you know, muscle to it. And, you know, uh, it is sort of level locked, though, by these power cores based on your ops level. You'll get those through uh, missions. So you're also going to be limited in terms of how much you can tier this ship up based on your ops level for a little bit. But even just its base stats, you know, its attack, its DPR, not really that great. It's kind of similar to uh, like a 28, like a legionary or, you know, a maybe like, it's actually less than a Bortos. Uh, a Bortos gets into the 50,000 range pretty quickly. This one's still kind of low in the old DPR. Uh, it's because it's designed specifically for these higher level targets. If you're fighting... You know, the hostiles, you see the bonuses on it jump up pretty quickly, and you're getting huge amounts of damage. Uh, but that's also because the hostiles have like 100 million health. Uh, so you need these big, huge chunks of damage in order to kill them consistently. The other thing you want to focus on when you're killing these things, I know I'm rambling on, the video's taking a lot longer than I wanted it to, but there's a lot of stuff we're talking about. Uh, when you get out to these systems here, You have all these explorers. All right, so they start at 28 million, and then they scale up fairly quickly after that. Uh, but each of them, three types of them, have buffs on them. This one right here, you see this percent. This boosts your critical... Let's come in here to the consumables. So it gives you these three things. Sometimes they activate automatically, which is what they're supposed to do. Sometimes they don't, and you have to come in here manually and click them to activate them. This one here gives you 100% more shots per round, so you shoot more shots per round. This one here gives you plus 100% critical chance, making all your hits criticals. And then this one here gives you plus 50% critical damage. As you can see, they last for five minutes, so when you kill something and it automatically activates, five minutes from then, you can check your battle log and see exactly what's going on there. Uh, so you'd want to come in to the system, hit the three real quick that have the buffs on them so you get all buffs activated and then for five minutes you're a killing machine you just fly around and destroy everything uh, and you're getting little bits of cargo from each of these guys trying to fill up your cargo capacity every couple of minutes once it's killed this interceptor guy spawns who has about five times as much 
of the cargo. He's got 685. These guys had about 120. Uh, he's an interceptor, so you don't have the combat triangle advantage. So you're gonna take a little bit more damage, but again, you're you know you're, you're getting extra shots. You're getting all criticals uh, with an increased damage amount. So your goal is to hit you know a couple of these guys after you kill a few of them, and you know the interceptor will respawn. Everybody dashes after the interceptor, kill it, get a lot more cargo, fill up your cargo faster, take less hull damage. That's kind of the trick with the Mantis. We'll get to the final question that I hear everybody asking with regards to ships. And thank you for indulging me this far. Thank you for coming along for this journey from 31 to 33. Hopefully it didn't, doesn't take you this long uh, to get through the video as it does to actually move up these ops levels. <laughs> So there, just like that, we're done. Did I do cash then? Turn in, got that. Now, if I wanted to, I could come over here to my Mantis refinery, and I could cash in there. I've got, I could do four chest pulls. Hey, five Ortegas. Usually, I save these for an officer event, but just to show you some drop rates, two Spock. It's kind of what you get. You get a bunch of twos. Occasionally, you get a five. Occasionally, you get one epic. Yeah, it's kind of all random. The last question that everybody asks, if you short by shipyard level, once you get to Ops 32, you have a new range of faction ships that you can also get. They are the Burrell, the Intrepid, and the Gladius. And a lot of people ask, should I build these? The answer to that question really is no. You've spent your time, you've got one of your 28s here, you've done a pretty good job upgrading it from 28, you know, 29, 30 in the last video, and as you progressed, uh, you get to, you know, Ops 31, 32, and now you're sitting here looking at, like, well, now do I pick up one of these guys? And I'm going to explain why no, and I'm going to show you a little bit of the math as to why, but the simple answer is, is you don't want to spend the faction credits because you want to save them for the epic, and you don't want to invest the three-star resources because you also want to save those. So when you get your epic, you have a surplus and you can actually start to tear this thing up a little bit. So let's do it. Let's look at two ships side by side. We're going to go with the Saladin because that's the one most people get. And we are going to go with the Gladius which is the 32 Interceptor. So we're talking about comparable ships. All right. So, ship ability when fighting hostiles. So this is only giving you a bonus when you're fighting hostiles. All right. Faction credits, it's three times as costly to get one of these and to unlock it. And again, that this is a lot of faction credits. This is, you know, the epics, as we covered, cost 180,000 to unlock. So you're going to spend a third of an epic to get one of these rare ships. Or that would just be you're a lot closer to getting an epic if you save those credits. Okay. Now let's talk some numbers. Realistically speaking, by the time you get to this range, we're going to say your Saladin should be Tier 6. You've spent this amount of resources getting your ship up to this level. So you're already here at Tier 6. You've got a DPR of about 40,000 base. Again, you're doing a lot more damage than that. Power you know, not going to matter. You know, you're, you're over a million in power. 1.2, 1.4, somewhere in that range now. Uh, well, 1.1 to 1.2, realistically, is where you are in power if you're up to Tier 6. I think that's where my Bortas is right now. You've got a warp range of 45. That gets you to a good number of systems for your grinding. And you've spent... 
about 1,600 crystal and 400 and almost 500 gas. So again, not a big investment. I'm sorry. For you spent 3,800 to get it this far. So now your question really is, do you invest to take it the rest of the way and, and max it out? At which point in time your DPR gets up to 57,000. Or do you invest the faction credits into a new ship and start over? And just to compare apples to apples, you could max this ship out with 1,600 gas. This is 1,200. 4,500 crystal. This is 5,400. So you could max out your Saladin, get it up to about 1.5 million strength, get a DPR of about 57,000. Or you could build a Gladius and invest, leave, abandon this ship, and invest at the same amount of resources and get it from Tier 1 to Tier 5. DPR, 48,000 compared to 57,000. You're doing 10,000, 9,000 less damage per round. You do get more hull health and more shield health, but you're doing a lot less damage. So that means you're not going to be killing things as quickly. And you're going to be taking more damage throughout those fights. So you're going to be using up this extra hull health and shield health. And if we want to talk about warp range, at tier 5, your warp is 46. Not really good enough to get you to the highest level systems that you're going to need it to get it to. Whereas here, your warp range is 60, and you can pretty much go anywhere. So then it really comes down to you have to invest a bit further to get this the rest of the way. Now you've got to push this to tier 6. Tier 6 gets your DPR. You're still slightly less, so now you've got to push it to tier 7 to get your DPR to be higher. You're spending a lot more time in tiering it up. Your repair costs are higher. Your repair time is higher. You've also now spent double the amount of tritanium and you've spent significantly more three times as much, well two and a half times the gas and three times the crystal to get this up high enough to get it to tier 7 to the point where now it's doing more damage per round than that max Saladin. Not really worth the investment. Um, you know, this is a ship that you are going to abandon pretty quickly. And if you want to th throw it over here and say we go for, you know, the D4, which is the epic ship, you're going to get at 34. What's the base coming right out of the box? DPR on the epic is 51,000. You're spending commons and you're upgrading it. You're spending a little bit and you're upgrading it. And now suddenly you've spent less than you would have spent over here to get this ship to be better than your Saladin. And now for only this low, low price, you now have a ship that's better than this one, uh, relatively speaking, right? So, and if you want to talk about shield health and hull health, a lot more hull health, a lot more shield health. These are nearly double. Again, it's an epic. This is actually closer to triple. Nah, two and a half, two and a quarter. Uh, this is double. This is two and a quarter times. Okay. So again, this is just getting this guy up to tier five. So instead of spending all these resources starting over and then doing it again when you get this ship, finish the 28. It'll carry you over. Skip the 32. Save the extra resources. And right out of the box, when you can get your 34 and start playing with it, you can start tearing it up, and you can get it even bigger and even better. You're doing a lot higher DPR. You've got a lot more hull health. And looking at your warp range, 
you know, you're at 56, which is pretty close. You only need 53 to get to, like, Tiger Core or someplace like that or some of the uh, other veteran systems where you can finish up your faction grinding. Uh, you get it to Tier 6, you get it to up to 60, and then it can go anywhere below Deep Space. And you can kind of ride this puppy out until you get to 39. That's really it. That's the math. That's the breakdown. That's everything that goes on between 31 and 33, all the major events. Uh, again, thank you for sticking with me. I know this is over an hour. It's longer than I wanted it to be, but I really wanted to show these examples, kind of do the side by side. And this is what you should be looking at when you're when you're thinking about, you know, what am I going to be coming into next? When should I be investing in this ship versus getting a new one? Um, and again, skip the 32s, skip the faction miners for now. Circle back to those later. Focus on the amalgam. Focus on maxing out your level 28 ship and save the faction credits and keep stockpiling those and doing your away teams so you can get your G3 epic as close to 34 as possible. Uh, thanks for watching. Hope you subscribe to the channel. We're getting closer to a thousand and I appreciate all your help and support and uh, I'll see you around the galaxy.